Hi guys, so today I'm back with another video and this time it's kind of a book review slash book discussion slash discussion of topics that are being dealt with in this particular book. The book I'm talking about is Eating Animals by Jonathan Safran Foer, which is a non-fiction book that he has written about the state of the meat industry um, in the USA, as well as his personal struggle and journey through vegetarianism and through his life, like how he dealt with meat, what kind of significance it had for him and how he finally came to the decision that he wants to be a vegetarian. The first and most important thing that I appreciated about this book is that it's not one of those that have an agenda that they push on you. Even though the author does have very strong opinions on this subject, this entire book seemed to be a very objective account of the situation as well as relying on facts rather than emotion and sort of making people feel bad about their lifestyles. As a meat eater, I didn't really read this book and feel kind of shamed for not sticking to a plant-based diet. The author doesn't pretend to be flawless, he doesn't pretend to be perfect, he doesn't say that um, he has made no mistakes and he hasn't slipped up in his lifestyle and, and like that's a non plus ultra thing that you should be doing as being a vegetarian. He just gives a very detailed, sometimes almost too detailed account of the situation of the meat industry in the US, comparing it to Europe sometimes where over here it's a little bit better as far as I've gathered, but it's not ideal either, you know, we've also got things that we definitely need to work on over here. It's just that the situation in the US is particularly bad. Um, the expansion of factory farms where uh, really really cheap meat is produced and the horrendous circumstances both for the animals and the people working there. Basically they have taken over the entire industry. That's something that he points out is that the upsurge of factory farms has made it almost impossible for smaller farmers who want to treat their animals well um, to actually be able to do so. Not only because that would make them non-competitive in the business and they would probably not be able to survive as such, but also because they obviously have their own standards of how they want their animals slaughtered and because most businesses like that are fact farms like that are factory farms, the appropriate slaughterhouses and places where people could take their animals to be killed humanely just don't exist anymore. The infrastructure is what's missing here and they just don't have any chance to survive without like you know help from certain organizations that do exist and that have been created um, to support them but it's just still a struggle like an upstream swimming upstream sort of thing. What I found also super interesting about this is that it's not just a straight up standpoint for vegetarianism and against eating meat. It is much more complex than that. For example, this book cites people from all around the industry, from all corners. For example, um, there's an essay written by an activist who is like sneakily breaking into factory farms to uncover what's actually going on there and like, you know, doing sort of whistleblowing type stuff. But also there is an account of a factory farmer in there who has written his own opinion on the subject saying that while he doesn't think that he's doing everything that he could, he also thinks that the industry is like as I said, the infrastructure is lacking and it's just what consumers want. Consumers want cheap meat that is easily accessible, that they don't have to pay a lot of money for. It's also a matter of um, demand and supply. So if everybody would stop buying factory farm meat, they would obviously go under. So it's kind of like, it's not just a simple problem that has a simple solution, but I think everybody is partly to blame for this entire thing. It's not just like one person or one big corporation, even though there are those and they definitely have a large share of the blame. I don't think it's just on them, you know, and this book kind of illustrates that from like a wholesome perspective, like giving, giving kind of all sides to the story and I really, really appreciate that. And this kind of plays into, again, as I said, this book isn't just a straight up love letter for vegetarianism. The author himself has struggled with like thinking, like trying to figure out his own moral standpoint on the subject, saying that it's like definitely better, for example, to eat, um, you know, non-factory farm meat than factory farm meat, and that that also is a step in the right direction. So it's not just like black and white, like eating meat is bad, 
not eating meat is good but it's more gray area-ish than that and there's definitely more like stepping stones in between the two like bad and good and like you know i think that this book gives a great account of that and it does its job well of giving you your options like if you want to make a difference you don't have to go straight to veganism you know you can like work your way there by just slowly like bettering your actions or like improving upon what you do despite being incredibly objective throughout the entire book he does state that he himself has come to the decision to be a vegetarian because he can't morally justify anything else for himself for me personally i think this book has had such a huge impact in my life and i read it about a month ago um over a period of like one or two weeks i think because some of this like scenes described in it or some of the just things that he says are so heartbreaking and heart-wrenching and i couldn't it was just so much bad you know do you ever just read something or watch something and you just feel the negativity kind of overwhelm you and then you just like have to put it down and like take a break from it because that's how I felt with this book for a large part. I don't want to discourage you from reading it. On the contrary, I think everybody should read this book because ignorance isn't bliss and it doesn't make you, um, you know, any less guilty to not be aware of the situation. No, it's not pleasant to sort of, you know, think about the horrible things that are happening in our world, but you know, it doesn't change the fact that they are happening and I think it's at least you're acknowledging them and giving them their due thought and the due, um, you know, mind space in your head that they deserve. Of course, it's easier to ignore it and to continue buying like 30 cent meat that you see in the store, but like for every time you do that, just think about what has had to happen for that to be so cheap. And it's not just the animals and the workers there who suffer from the situation it is us as consumers as well because by eating this meat this diseased and mistreated and sort of unnatural meat you know we are ingesting chemicals and antibiotics and bacteria that should not be put into our bodies it is simply not healthy for us either it is a horrible horrible situation all around everybody suffers and the only real person who you know has any benefit are the corporations who do it and the factory farms themselves because they make a fuck ton of money from the entire business nobody else benefits so i think it is our job as consumers to change that and to to stand up against that and say no i don't want to be fed this diseased meat that doesn't provide anything good to my life and that has been created by means that are incredibly inhumane and if you would treat any other like as like recognized as a pet animal in such a way people would be outraged but because they're you know livestock and like raised to be eaten it somehow changes the standards. I won't claim that before reading this book, I hadn't been at least marginally aware that there, you know, are such things as factory farms, but I definitely didn't know the extent to which they existed and the role that they played in the global farming industry, not just in the US. At the end of the day, actively concerning yourself with a certain topic is the only way that you're really gonna see the truth and that you're really gonna be open to the situation and that you'll be able to see it for what it is. There have been moments in this book where I was sat there crying over the situation of our world because not only did it affect me like you know mentally to think and emotionally to think that this is something that happens but I also had these these horrible feelings of helplessness and frustration in the face of you know huge enormous powerful wealthy corporations that can basically do whatever they please and that don't have anybody regulating them i don't even live in the us i don't even have any influence on who is in power there i don't have any voting rights there i can't do shit i can't cause any kind of change in the usa basically as a single person you cannot cause you cannot cause the level of change that you want to cause you know what i mean after reading this i was just sat there like i want to do something i need to do something i can't just sit here and do nothing because this is happening as i speak and as i think about this and as i read this there are animals dying and suffering and humans dying and suffering for the same fucking reasons and it is the just such a just a mind-numbing and like life-draining thoughts because 
what can I do? What power do I have to tell them to fuck off and not put money above everything, you know? And really what it boils down to is personal choice. I personally can't change the laws in the US. I can spread the word that this is happening. I can do this video right now and talk about this book and tell all of the people watching to please read it and inform themselves on this topic. I can change what kind of food I purchase and put into my body. And I can influence what my future family is going to eat. And I can influence to a certain extent what my friends and family now consume because I can tell them about this and I can plead and beg them to not buy factory farm meat. My personal single person powers are obviously very, very limited, but it doesn't mean that I am powerless. And I think that that is an important thing to tell yourself is you can do something. And I don't mean just retweeting a small thing on Twitter, but like actually putting yourself in a mindset where you're open to opportunities of change. It doesn't mean that you have to change the world in a minute, but it means that you can take steps to influence more and more people. Because the more people read this book, I'm sure the more people will be convinced that this is a situation that needs to change. And maybe those people will go out themselves and make a video or a blog post or just talk to their friends and family about this subject. And if you think about it, if that chain continues, eventually everybody should actually be aware of this and should be willing to do something to change it. As for my personal choices, I have now become a vegetarian, at least for now. I want to not eat meat at all, but that is not something that I would necessarily think is the be all end all solution. This is just for me personally that I just don't feel comfortable right now eating meat or fish. And I mean, that could change. I'm not gonna sit here and, you know, promise the world that I will never touch a single piece of animal product or meat or fish, whatever, for the rest of my life. But I'm gonna try and see where it takes me because this is as long as, definitely as long as I feel this strongly about it, I just don't see myself eating meat. Honestly, after making the decision, I have had nightmares, plural nightmares, of accidentally eating meat and having sort of forgotten that I had decided not to eat meat and then having eaten it and immediately the feeling of guilt was unbearable and when I woke up in the morning I was so relieved that it was just a dream because I was like, what? I thought I eat meat, like, ah, why? And I mean, it's kind of ridiculous because I have eaten meat for like 23 years of my life almost and you know, I've never had these feelings before, but now just being aware of the situation is like, I don't want to put an animal inside my body. Like that, no, I don't want to do that. At this point, and knowing what I know, it just doesn't feel right for me. But that is not what I want this message of this video to be, is that you need to be a vegetarian. I want people to stop eating factory farm meat. That is the number one goal that I have. Obviously, ideally, you would stop eating meat completely. I encourage those of you and those around me in my environment to buy healthy meats, you know, that have been raised in a good environment, that have had, you know, a garden to run around in, that have had healthy, you know, species-appropriate food, that have had normal social relationships with their fellow animals and then obviously also found a humane end in a slaughterhouse that adheres to humane and non-cruel killing conditions. Is it ideal? No, but it is miles better, miles better than buying factory farm meat. So if you don't feel comfortable skipping meat and um, crossing it out from your diet or if you just don't want to and you don't care enough about this issue, please at least Spend a little bit more, do a little bit more, do a little bit better than you did yesterday. And just try to make a better choice the next time you go shopping. I don't think that radicalism and radical change and choices are going to really influence the right kind of change. But let's be honest, if every one of us just made a slight sacrifice of some unnecessary luxury in our lives, we would be able to spend that little bit more money on food and to buy the proper food and to buy organic food and organic meat and to, you know, be conscious of what we're actually putting into our bodies. 
I think being a conscious eater is so much better than just labeling yourself a vegetarian or a vegan and just, you know, radically excluding certain food groups from your life without really doing any research what you're actually eating instead of those. Vegans aren't exempt from potentially harming the planet. Just because you're not eating meat and you're not consuming animal products doesn't mean you're a saint who does not harm the planet one bit. I'm not trying to hate on veganism, I just think that people need to be aware of what they're consuming. Did you know that millions and millions of bees die every year in the production of almond milk because they the keepers don't care enough to take them out of the, you know, in what's it called, insecticide clouds that are being sprayed over the almond groves because it's cheaper for them to just buy new bees in the spring than to feed them throughout the winter. That is almost the most frustrating thing to think that unless you're eating something that has grown in your own garden, it is basically impossible to guarantee that nothing and no one has suffered for what you are consuming. So that is why I advocate for conscious eating and for conscious living and for just being aware of what you're doing because unless you don't realize the things that you're doing wrong, you can't possibly change them. As long as you think it's okay and it doesn't harm anyone and it's totally fine, there is, won't be any motivation for you or anyone else to go out and try to be a little bit better. I don't think it's right to put so much pressure on any individual to be perfect in this matter. We are humans, we make mistakes and it is totally fine to slip up sometimes and to, you know, Get, fall off the rails or whatever, but it's, it's just the most important thing I think is to just be aware that that was a mistake and that, that was something that you should have worked on and should have done better and so next time you won't repeat it. And I think that, that is all that we can and should be able to ask of anyone. That's it for this rant slash review video. Hope you guys found it somewhat enjoyable and interesting and informative. I hope no one was offended. I definitely don't want to call out anybody specifically and be like, vegans are doing this wrong and vegetarians are doing this wrong and people who eat me. Like, who am, I to, who am I to tell you what to do? I don't want to force you to do anything. I just want to give you the information that I got and share it with you and hopefully encourage you to read this book because it has changed my life. This is the most influential book for me that I've ever read and it's probably gonna be my favorite one of all times because never have I felt like so much of a different person as after reading this book. So that is where I'm gonna end the video. Please share this video with your friends and family and leave a comment down below telling me what your thoughts are on this topic. I'm really interested to know. Let's get some opinions going but be civil, be polite and don't don't be one of those people that I'm going to have to block because we don't want that, do we? I'm going to see you guys soon. Have a lovely week. Bye!